Rockstar Audio. Hey, do you love Rockstar? We love Rockstar! Welcome, everyone, to Backstage Pass. What just happened? Uh, that was my little tribute to another wrestling podcast that shall remain nameless. My mind is blown right now. I don't know what just happened. I, I feel like I woke up in another dimension. Well, hey, maybe another podcast. Like yeah, I, said. I, I don't just, know. I just wanted to welcome everyone, whether you love the faces or love the heels, whether you are part of the Killer Sweet crew. Or the back row boys. Hey, I like that. Whether you are a fanatic who's here every Wednesday at Amped, or just coming to your first pay-per-view, all are welcome to the Backstage Pass podcast. That was beautifully said. That, that was like a poem. Even, even you. Was that James Joyce? Even you, Brad. Even You're, Brad, yes. Even Brad's welcome. You know, he, he might get a shut-up or two from the crowd, but, but we all love Brad. That's right. Deep down inside, we all love Brad. But, you know, a very intense beginning there. And, yeah. I, I mean, I think that fits because, you know, our, our Backstage Pass guest spotlight mm-hmm. is Zachary Wentz that's of right. the OI4K. And uh, I, I have a feeling that's going to be a very intense interview later. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, I, I'm looking forward to it, but uh, I'm nervous as well. Anxious, yeah. I guess, would be the I word. Mean, we have a lot of questions to ask him about yeah. ever since what happened at We Are Rockstar. So, you know what? Hey, why don't we get right into it? Yeah, let's talk about We Are Rockstar. Holy cow, Mark. That was incredible. Absolutely. I don't even know where to begin. I mean, we Are Rockstar may be the greatest pay-per-view in Rockstar Pro history, and that's saying a lot. It was absolutely phenomenal. And, uh, you know... I. I've, I'm still a rookie, still green in the commentation station. Hey, you're doing a great job. Well, thank you. And, and to be able to call that pay-per-view with you was, you know, one of the most exciting things in my life. That was, that was fantastic. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. It was great. I mean, we had, we had Shane Strickland in the house. We did. We, we had all sorts of people there. I mean, we had Eric Ryan here. Eric yep. Ryan and Aaron Williams had a great match. And you know what? They're going to have another at Saved by the Bell. That they are. And then after that, I mean... We have to talk about Dave Christ and David Starr. I mean, what Holy what in the world happened there? Christ, yeah. A shocker to the rock star nation. You know, we, we had had Dave on this very podcast just right. a few days before that night. And no one, no one saw that coming. That he would do such a thing. That he would join up with J.T. Davidson here in Rockstar. That... OI4K Incorporated would be born on that night. Who would have known? I mean, JT Davidson, Zachary Wentz, and Dave Christ, uh, apparently they're all aligned now. Now they're the world's most dangerous group. And, uh, you know, like you said, the last podcast, Dave Christ came on here and talked about how desperate he was yeah. to defeat David Starr and to turn some heads once again here in Rockstar Pro. And uh, I guess we should have taken him by his word because... I guess so, you know. I, I did not think he'd be that desperate. Me either. We've known Dave for years. Yeah. We've seen what he can do in the ring. No doubt. Yeah, I, I just, I can't believe it. I'm still trying to wrap my head around it, Mark. It's, it's, it's nuts. Yeah, and I'm sure everybody listening has seen what's happened, but if you haven't seen the iPay-Per-View, you can go to DIYWrestling.com and order We Are Rockstar, or you can come right to the Rockstar Pro Arena and pick up the digital video disc. <laughs> That's right. Not in Blu-ray yet. They but, sell uh, videos on digital discs now? <laughs> digital discs, yes. Awesome. <laughs> That's amazing, isn't it? Yeah, um, but, you know, th- that wasn't even the main event of the night. You know, uh, uh, that We Are Rockstar card is just packed. Um, I know. We've talked about so much, we haven't even mentioned the main event. Like you said, yeah. Ron Mathis defended against Dustin Rays in a great matchup, yep. and Ron Mathis retained the green and gold. I-, I don't know what else to say. I mean, Dustin Rays and Ron Mathis, that kind of started the friction within OI4K. Mm-hmm. And it finally came to a head at We Are Rockstar. And Ron Mathis, the white trash messiah. Right. The... The uh, Master of Pain. What other nicknames does he have? I don't know. Is he still relentless? I don't even know anymore. As far as I can tell. <laughs> but he is still the Rockstar Pro Champion. That's right. Uh, but we don't want to give you the false impression that nothing has happened since we are Rockstar. No, no, no. Because it's been just a, a absolutely insane month here. Things changing, uh, right? The winds of change are upon us, it would seem. Absolutely. I, I mean, the very Wednesday after we are Rockstar, Jake Crist goes from being the booker man mm-hmm. of Rockstar Pro to competing in the ring, and then Ron Mathis gets in charge of Rockstar Pro? I mean... Lunacy. 
Yeah, absolutely. And then Jay Chris later that night competed against Aaron Williams in a sensational match. And really, I mean, Jay Chris, this past month, I would say, has been the month of Jay Chris. I mean, this guy, he's kind of going on his last run, some say. Right. And, in fact, that's why this Friday, Saved by the Bell, it's called The Final Encounter. That's right. Between Ron Mathis and Jay Chris for the Rockstar Pro Championship, that's the last time you will ever see that matchup. I mean, they've had a lot of great matchups. Ron Mathis and Jay Chris. This will be the last one. That's so, right. So don't don't miss this event. I mean, you will be in bed, crying yourself to sleep, <laughs> upset that you missed out on the last ever matchup between Jay Chris and Ron Mathis. We'll be talking about these matchups years from now. You speak the truth. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. No. Uh, before Jake takes on Ron, yeah. we have to look back one week from tonight in what many are calling the greatest match in rock star history. <laughs> no argument here. As Jake Christ and Dave Christ tore the house down at the last amp. Uh, yeah, you said it. I mean, Jake Christ, Dave Christ. That matchup right there has enough hype mm-hmm. that it's almost impossible to live up to. But lo and behold, they did it and then some. Well, what a matchup that was. I mean, I know we called the action. Mm-hmm. That had been a highlight of my commentation oh. station <laughs> announcing career right there is calling a Jake versus Dave match. I mean, it was just absolutely incredible. I mean, you had to be there to really know the feeling inside oh, that yeah. building that it, night. It, 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 you could feel the energy. It was incredible. And it was the first time, possibly the last time, yes. uh, that Jake and Dave locked up here at Rockstar Pro. Um, some other surprises. We saw Joshua Singh, a Rockstar Nation favorite, yeah. join up with Gregory Iron and the Iron Curtain. Uh, what is going on with that? Does Gregory Iron have some sort of brainwashing abilities? What, what's I don't going know. on here? I Maybe mean, it's, it's, is it a part of the inspiration? I have no idea, but uh, all I know is that a pairing of Joshua Singh and Gregory Iron is a very dangerous thing for everybody else in Rockstar Pro. That is absolutely true. And speaking of dangerous pairings... What about Bro Ohio? We see Flex and Pex, Flex Jordan and Clayton Jackson. Uh, they've been having a bit of a confrontation, shall we say, between Flex and Pex and Ron Mathis and his group. They seem fired up. Yeah, we've seen quite a bit of a change in Flex and Pex yeah. in the last month. I mean, last month heading into the iPay-Per-View, they were just two dudes that like to work out and, I don't yeah. know, they thought pretty highly of themselves. Yeah. But now they seem very motivated. Ever since the Wednesday after We Are Rockstar, when Ron Mathis got in their face as the new guy in charge right. and told them that they're wasting their potential, basically. Right. In, in other words, that's basically what he said to their face. And since then, we've kind of seen them, uh, you know, we've seen some leadership within come out, and mm-hmm. they're challenging Ron Mathis. I mean, they want to prove to Ron that they're not wasting their potential. And no. We've seen it. I, you can just tell looking at Clayton in the ring, looking at Flex in the ring, they do have a world of potential, and we're seeing them start to live up to it a little bit right. here, individually and together as a unit here yeah. at Rockstar Pro. Mathis made the ultimatum. Right. You know, he said, join me or face the con- consequences. They stood up, they faced the consequences, yeah. and you know they're the better for it, I think. I, I think so, too. I mean, uh, Clayton came up short against Ron Mathis, but it was his first ever singles match here in yeah. Rockstar Pro. And, I mean, he went toe-to-toe with the Rockstar Pro champion, and he looked pretty good at times. He I did. Mean, uh, you could just see... The future looks pretty bright for Flex and Pex, if you ask me. Absolutely. Uh, bright enough and, that and, you have to wear shades? Uh, maybe so. <laughs> Even indoors. But, you know, they're making Gainesville, Bro, Ohio. Yeah. The town of Gainesville here in the state of Bro, Ohio. They're making them proud right now. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Speaking of Mathis and his little clique, shall we call them that? Sure. I, I, don't, I, I don't think Shawn Michaels and Triple H care if you uh, call him a clip. Dude, it's with a C. It's, oh, it's okay. The actual I, I get it then. Yeah. Is it uh, M&CK, like the Adam Sandler movie? No. Okay, good. Q-U-E, I believe. Okay. Uh, so, although my spelling's never been great. <laughs> so, we've seen uh, Chimera and Kyle Craven. Too many Ks in a row there, but you get the idea. <laughs> we've seen them stand up to Mathis, challenge his authority a little bit, and it wasn't until Michael came back that things really kind of uh, got heated. Uh, it's, I don't know. Is there trouble in paradise? Is that is that uh, faction going to fall apart before our very eyes? Uh, if you ask me, it, it seems like that is the case. I mean, it might not happen immediately. Yeah. But I mean, there are, you could just tell there are some feelings within those wrestlers there. I mean, Kyle Craven. I mean, he wants to ride the coattails here of the uh, top faction, the Rockstar Pro Champion, the majority owner. You right. know, all of that. 
We have a head official there. But Kyle Craven himself, if Ron Mathis keeps that Rockstar Pro Championship, I mean, he wants a challenge for the great yeah. gold, right? I mean, you can say the same for Benjamin Chimera, the guy who was the first ever champion. He'd love to have it again, right? Yeah. You know, I, here's the thing, though. I don't think Craven needs Mathis's money. I don't think he needs his support. I mean, look at him. He's a beast. All I right. think he can take care of himself in the ring. He could be that next Rockstar champion. Yeah. Who knows? You're very right about that. And I mean, the sooner he realizes that, that he doesn't need anybody by his side. He doesn't right. need JT Davidson to tell him things anymore. Yeah. He doesn't need Michael, Ron Mathis, whoever's in charge of that click with a C <laughs> leading the way. I mean, once he realizes that on his own, he is as dangerous as anybody here. I mean, look out. Absolutely. So, so let's look ahead. So many of these people we're talking about so many of these wrestlers have amazing matches scheduled for Saved by the Bell. I can't wait for Saved by the Bell. The final encounter. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> I'm so, rubbing my hands. You, are, you can, can you hear, hear that? that. Can you pick that up, Engineer Matt? Do you hear that? Oh, okay. man. That's how excited I am. All right. So let's talk about some of these matches. This is all this Friday, September 4th, here at 1106 East 3rd Street at the Rockstar Pro Arena. Excellent plug. Yeah, thanks. Uh, these are in no particular order. But we have the CZW Wired champion, Tim Donst, taking on Dark Star Matt Taylor. I mean, what a treat it's going to be to see Tim Donst. This mm-hmm. guy's come through a lot. This guy battled cancer recently, and he defeated it. Yep. And he's going to look to defeat the Dark Star Matt Taylor. Matt Taylor, you know, he, he's had a streak here against these uh, newcomers coming in. He right. be- beat Shane Strickland at our last eye pay per view. He would love to add Tim Donst to that list as well. Absolutely, he would. Speaking of Shane Strickland, he's taking on. OI4K Incorporated's Dave Christ. Oh, man. Shane Strickland, Dave Christ. You're talking about two great high flyers and so much more than high flyers as well. Two great wrestlers. And, I mean, I can't wait to say that one. There's nothing more you need to say. Yeah, absolutely. A rematch coming up at Saved by the Bell. We have Eric Ryan taking on Rockstar Nation favorite, the baddest man alive, Aaron Williams. They had a classic at We Are Rockstar. They're going to try to one-up it. It's Saved by the Bell, the final encounter. Dun, dun, dun. Not an easy task, but I think both men are up to it. Uh, additionally, in tag team action, we're going to see High Life take on Grits and Gravy. Well, the tag division in Rockstar Pro, it's been off the charts. We've been talking about it for months. We have. These are two of the hottest tag teams right there. That's right. And they've been at a course. They've been heading towards one another for a while now, and they'll finally face off at Saved by the Bell. And I, I can't wait for it. I tell you, a 12-pack and a large order of grits and gravy on top, oof. You know what? Have you ever gone to the Waffle House drunk? No, I have not. (laughs) Me neither. But I assume it would be pretty messy, and that's what (laughs) we're going to see this Friday. It's likely. Uh, Additionally, the product David Starr is coming back to Rockstar. He has a score to settle with OI4K Inc. He's going to take on Zachary Wentz in a personal challenge match. Uh, I can't wait for this one. We saw what happened to We Are Rockstar when David Starr just got screwed over by OI4K. Right. And this is a huge matchup, probably the biggest one in Zachary Wentz's career right here. Oh, a, no question. A one-on-one matchup on an eye pay-per-view against an elite top opponent. I mean, Zachary Wentz can prove to the world that his actions mattered, that the reason why he did what he did was four matches like this, and he can prove to the world that he's one of the best this Friday at Saved by the Bell. No question. Another... CZW title holder, CZW champion, the bulldozer, Matt Tremont and Ganger team up to take on Nate Wings and Juggernaut Jeremiah with Jeremiah with Bobby Olson. I like how you got the bulldozer part right with yeah. the bulldozer, yeah, yeah. but then you messed up Jeremiah. I did. Jeremiah, Zebediah, what's his name? <laughs> I didn't even say Ganga right. <laughs> Ganga, Ganga. Um, the bulldozer. But yeah, that's going to be a great matchup right there. I mean, serious clash of styles yes, there. No doubt about it. I mean, you got two of the best hardcore wrestlers mm-hmm. going up against a great tag team that functions so well as a duo in Jeremiah and Nate Wings. I right. mean, that's going to be a great one right there. Yeah, we expect Nate Wings to be the high flyer, but we got to remember the Bulldog blew our minds just a short while ago with that suicide dive. He was fired up, man. He was. He did a suicide dive, landed on his feet. I don't know how. And he was fired up, man. I, I don't know if, if you know this, but a, after the show, he, he straight up came up to me and was just like, how was that dive, man? <laughs> was it as awesome as I pictured it? And I was like, dude, you blew my mind. Hey, Bulldogs take flight only here yeah, they do. at Rockstar Pro. I think we mentioned him just a little bit before, maybe the New Age Plague Jason Gorey. He takes on Dustin Rays. 
Yeah, Jason Corey's been pretty impressive here in Rockstar Pro. He had that great matchup with Kyle Maverick the first go-around, and the second go-around, Maverick won as well. But, right. I mean, he's been very impressive nonetheless, and now him one-on-one with Dustin Rays, that's two great competitors right there. Yeah, that's going to be a, a slobber knocker, as they say. A good old slobber knocker. Uh, Crimson mask. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> Back to tag team action. We're going to see Craven and Chimera take on Flex and Pex. That's a lot of big boys in that ring, right? That there. is. That's a lot of uh, muscle mass, shall yeah. we say? We got a lot of muscle, and we got a lot of mass as well. <laughs> and two, count them, two title matches. We're going to see the American Luchacore Championship defended by Kyle Maverick against his own domestic partner, Samantha Heights. Whoa, whoa, what? Say that again. That's right. An intergender battle. For the American Luchacore Championship. I hope Sam brings it home. Uh, Well, I guess it's the same home, but I hope she brings it home with her. I hope she decapitates him. (laughs) Not literally, of course. Eh. But uh, I want to see her throw that discus elbow. Oh, I would love to see that. I mean, how many times has she helped Maverick retain the championship? I'd love to see her win it. Absolutely. And last but certainly not least, the Rockstar Pro Championship is on the line as for the final time... Jake Christ will take on our champion Ron Mathis in a final encounter. It's the last time they will ever face off. So many classics, whether it's here, whether it's CZW, whether it's been in Hamilton, they faced off so many times and it's always great. I mean, I, I still remember the time Mathis and Jake fought at the very end of an amp that appeared to be over. Mathis had sent the crowd home. And then they came out and had an impromptu match that I literally got goosebumps all over my body. Yeah. It was insane. And, and you can say the same about spring break Jake Chris initial last night right here at uh, Rockstar Pro they had a sensational matchup and now this is the last time they will ever face off this is one we'll be talking about for years you don't want to miss this one at all no doubt about it you're gonna want to be at Saved by the Bell and let's let's uh, shine the spotlight shall we say on one of the competitors there we talked about him a little bit earlier on we are joined in our spotlight segment by Zachary Wins you ready for this I think so let's do it it's time for the Rockstar Wrestler Spotlight. Okay, welcome back to the Backstage Pass Spotlight segment. And today we're going to shine the spotlight into a, uh, a shadowy corner, if you will. Right? A place of darkness. Um, we're joined by the crowned Prince of Dayton himself. From OI4K Incorporated, we have Zachary Wentz. Thank you for being here. Yep. And I, I, I've got to say it, that, you know, because your presence is undeniable. Uh, his father. The spooky Woken. The prince of Dayton himself. King. King. The king. Oh, king. Jesus Christ. The father right. of the No, no, no. You king. can call me Jesus if you want. <laughs> <laughs> but Mathis already got in trouble for it. Yeah. Uh, uh, white trash messiah? What? Yeah. Um, so, the king. My Big apologies. King. Of Dayton. Big king. Dave Christ. But yeah, Zachary once was supposed to be the guest, but yes. he, he brought his father with yeah, him. Yeah, you know what? I'm I guess we shouldn't be surprised. There are certain things that we're not allow you guys to ask him. So at any point in time that I say, one, two, three, four, fifth, yeah. you just stop the question. Okay. So you'll you'll set the limits here. Oh, I'll set the bar and the limits. Okay. Very right. low. Well, let's hope not, right? Set, the, set that bar high. Right, Zach? No. No? <laughs> You're not going to agree with your father, no, no. or disagree with your father. Exactly. Yeah. On, on tape, right? What the oh, king wow. says goes. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, you know, I, I wanted You guys to... also forgot to kiss the rings. Sorry. Do we have to? Uh, yeah. yeah. His his oh, uh, his rings are on his toes, though, so... Uh, get to kiss oh, come him. on. Do we, come, do we really have to? This is a, a PG podcast, even though it's audio only. Fine. But Thank once you. JT finds out... You guys might have a lawsuit. Oh, no. It's in our rock star contract. We now. can keep it between yeah. us, but it's kind of broadcast now, so I guess fine. not. Okay, fine. I guess not. Uh, well, Zach, I wanted to ask you about your pro wrestling history. But the thing is, the rock star nation has seen it pretty much from the beginning, right? Absolutely. You trained here, you debuted here. Yeah. And now, you're in. Let's face it, one of the scariest factions here in Rockstar today. Because everything I do, I do to the maximum. I do it to be the best. There's no reason why I should be mediocre in this business. 
Also, yeah, if I may interject, sure. He didn't start here. No, I did not. He did not start here. Oh well, well, I've got my facts. He right. actually, uh, he was actually abused and mistreated at another place and used for uh, manual labor for a year uh-huh. with promises of training that he never got. So then he you... came to the dark one. I see. So you learned some. Uh, uh, Awful truths, let's say, about the business right from the get-go. You had your hard knocks right at the beginning. You know? Oh, yeah. Do you want to uh, um, nope. get One, anything two, off? Three, your... four, fifth. Okay. All right, well. Um... well and even before pro wrestling, I thought I saw a video online. Uh, did you have, like, an MMA match with somebody online? Uh, did you have a career before pro wrestling, you know? I did. I did do MMA, which I, I started in high school wrestling, okay. college wrestling, mm-hmm. and then... Just the natural or natural train or whatever it is progression. Progression. Thank you. That's why I have him around. He helps me <laughs> with big, big words. But, well, uh, if I if I can also just before I, I cut this off, I will say this: he had a very lucrative MMA career, but the state of Ohio will no longer allow him to compete because they say that he is too dangerous. He is too violent. In the sport of MMA, so we brought him into professional wrestling. Said that due to his knockouts, because he has multiple knockouts, Mm -hmm. and the concussions that these people have sustained, Mm -hmm. that they're losing competitors and people refuse to fight the kid. And that's why he is no longer an MMA fighter and he is a pro wrestler now. There you go. I guess that's why he fits perfectly in the world's most dangerous group, right? He's a killer. Basically... When they stop the fights, the ref usually comes in and stops it. Yeah. They had to rip me off the guys every single time. There, there was a YouTube video, a second YouTube video that has recently been taken down, where he's ground pounding this guy, and the referee uh, tried to get get him off, and he just threw a, a back fist, knocked the referee clean wow. out. Where, where does this aggression, where does this violence come from? Growing up, yeah, just growing up with. Uh, a bunch of brothers getting beat on your yeah. whole life, and you're the smallest one. Ah. You know, you gotta kind of fight. Right. And, yeah. Fighting for survival, it sounds yeah. like. Yeah, and uh, growing up I had religion and everything shoved into my face, and I had a path guided for me, Yeah. and I kind of strayed from the path, and hmm. I have a lot of build-up aggression from that. Okay. Maybe uh, I don't want to get too personal, but I, I, I'd kind of like to know what you know. What was the catalyst? And I'm not talking about Dustin Ray. So you know what 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 created that change for you? You know, you know what was the spark that that made you decide there's another path for me? Not really anything. Just kind of realizing one day, you know, there's I started listening to a bunch of music and yeah. getting into that sort of hardcore metal scene. And okay. And it kind of opened me up, like, shit, I don't, I don't need to follow what everybody else tells mm-hmm. me to do. I'm yeah. going to go do my own thing. I think music can be that way for a lot of people. Uh, go ahead. I was just sighing, but <laughs> I guess I will oh, well, I'm sorry. add something in. You looked this. like you had something to say. No, no. Uh, I will also mention that uh, during one of our many, many sessions of, of talking and just soul-searching with each other, because we've done a lot of it, uh, we shared a moment mm-hmm. at, at uh, I don't know, late July, where I learned a lot about the kid. Yeah, I learned a lot about what he was about, and and uh, he remember I remember him telling me that the three six mafia mm-hmm. is what really got him into uh, being more aggressive in, in wrestling. Because beforehand he was a good wrestler, right? Mm-hmm. But then get. Getting that that juicy J in his in his mind, that's right. Getting that bring me the horizon in his mind. Yeah. Getting getting all those metal hardcore, crazy bands in his mind. Opened him up. Okay. So he he saw many different paths. And this killer path led to another killer. Yeah, that's basically kind of what I was going to touch on as well. Is that for the first year we've seen you here, your first rookie year, you've always been. You know, on the up and up, such a good kid, always fighting the good fight and all that. But then recently, we've seen this kind of attitude change. Was that all, so? That was always within you, and Dave helped bring that out of you, or, or did something happen that changed? Uh, that? I'll, I'll answer this for him. Go for it. Because we just talked about this last night. Okay. 
here's the thing. The kid has so much potential. More potential than half the guys that are less than four years on the roster. No argument here. Clay yeah. Jackson, same thing. He got that aggressiveness in him. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you exactly what it took. It took a lot of backstabbers. It took a lot of people talking shit. It took a lot of people thinking that he's disrespectful hmm. to open both of our eyes. Like, yeah, I'm very aware of how shitty pro wrestling can be. Right. But the kid didn't know it. The kid had no clue. And now he's facing the hard truths that there are guys in the back that are, are trying to underhandedly take what is his. I'm not going to say property, but I'm going to say take what is his, whether it be a relationship, whether it be a match, whether it be friendships, whatever it is, people are trying to take from him. Yeah. And you know what happens when you try to take meat out of a lion's mouth? Uh, you, you get, get your fit. face ripped off. Yeah. You get murdered. And that's exactly what happened. People try to take from my kid. People try to take from the OI4K. And now, the OI4K don't take shit from anyone. That's the change of heart. The change of heart was he learned at a young age that you can't even trust people you train with. That you can't even trust people that you're supposed to be friends with in this business. People who shake your hand face to face. But the minute you walk away... Mm -hmm. These little cocksuckers are stabbing you in the back. That's what changed. Okay. And, and, and you could see how, you know, as much as a lot would hate to say that attitude change was a, was a good thing, that ever since that moment happened at We Are Rockstar, I mean, th this next eye pay-per-view coming up at Saved by the Bell, he has his, Zach, you have your biggest match ever, I would say, against David Starr, right? Aaron Williams is no slouch. Oh, Did you right. see the way that he handled Aaron Williams last week? No. Did you see I mean, how aggressive he was? Did yeah, you see the change it. of heart? No. He didn't have to cheat. No. He didn't have to cheat at all. No, sir. And no, he didn't win. But you know what he got that night? I'll tell you exactly what he got that night. He showed heart, and he got the respect of the guys in the back. When I mean the respect, I mean they fear him. Right. They fear what this kid can do. They fear what this kid's about. And I'm not trying to hijack right. his, his, his thing, but these are things that he's not going to say because he's still too humble to say it. Right. So I'm going to say it for him. Fair enough. I'm going to say the things that need to come out. I'm going to say the things that are on his chest, the things that weigh him down every fucking day. Okay. He is too good. He is far too good to meddle around with the likes of the high life, to, to meddle around with, with guys like Rex Ultima. Come on. Sid? Sid Fabulous? Are you joking me? None of these people are on the same level as the kid. This kid is head and shoulders above everybody else on the roster. There's only one guy. One guy I can think of that I've seen from the get-go that this kid can compare to. And that's Jake fucking Christ. He has more heart. He moved two hours away from home to be here. He moved two hours away from home to train three days a week. We're here three fucking days a week. Do you know how many other people show up three days a week? No one. It's me, him, and Victor Faust. That's it. Nobody else shows up. That is what's making him a killer. That is what his change of heart is. You see all these, all these dudes that claim to be the best? No. No. This kid, within the year, will be in the same ranks as Jake Christ, as Dave Christ, as Aaron Williams, as David Starr. And like I said, I'm not trying to hijack his shit, but I'm telling you guys what I see. Right. I'm telling you guys what you need to hear. Because well, yeah. this shit is real. Right, and, and the truth is he has been that impressive. They've been calling him the rookie sensation for a long time, but it's only since that attitude change happened that he starts to get these big-time matches. And, and is that... Because of the help of yourself and I'm not JT helping Davidson? One bit. JT Davidson is not helping one okay. bit. You know who's doing it? It's his heart. It's his dedication. It's his, it's his lack of respect from the people in the back that is driving him. That is his driving force right now. When guys are talking shit in the back because they're jealous, that's what's driving him. Okay. That is the catalyst. No pun intended. All right. Fair enough. 
let's let's uh, cool things off a little bit, maybe. No, uh, you, you guys asked. Yeah, yeah. Um, this was the thing. We're going to get heated. Sure. The kid may not look like he's heated, but I guarantee you this right now. He may look cool, calm, and collected, but I'm the fucking loudmouth. Yeah. This dude's a killer. He's just like Jake Christ. He's a silent fucking killer. No question there. I mean, we've seen what he can do in the ring. No, you haven't. Oh, you, have, you haven't even scraped the fucking surface yet. Check out his MMA fights. Check out how bad he beats motherfuckers. you barely scratching it. Barely scratching it. Well, um... Treat him with respect. I, I, I intend to. He uh, is the prince for a reason. Right. Uh, so, well, well, one thing we have seen uh, uh, that I can uh, testify to its devastation, let's say, um, is a move that uh, you're calling Bite the Curb, uh, um, a move so violent we've seen it banned from television. Um, you're telling me that's just scratching the surface of what you can do, Zachary Lynch? It's just scratching the surface. That one move, I want to put people out. I want to break necks. I want to crush skulls. Can I, can I go ahead and just say something? Yeah, go and ahead. then you can finish? Go ahead. What kind of ridiculous shit is it that he's dropping people on their heads first with a snapmare driver? And that isn't even good enough yet. He's, he's then hitting them with the curb stomp. Right. That's wrong. That is so wrong. He is hurting people. One move alone could take them out. But no, he's sick and sadistic. He's got something wrong in his head. He wants to inflict that pain. So not only is he waiting, he's chomping at the bit for them to get up so he can slam their face into the mat just one more time. Well, you I, tell me, is that sick? Is that sadistic? Certainly Continue. Is. Continue. Sounds like he's a killer. Yeah. So what I feel is that if they're able to get up on their own after a match, I didn't do what I did. Or what I should do. Okay. So, so your job isn't to just win. Uh, no, in your I mind. want to break people. I'm here to break people. Well, uh, uh, let I, me let me let me go ahead and throw this out there to you. We're not here for wins. Okay. We're here to hurt people. Well, I, I have to ask: are, are you not concerned? I mean, banned from MMA because of the extremity of of the violence you inflict. I mean. Could the same thing not happen here at Rockstar? I mean, you know, don't, don't get me wrong. I understand. I think have, I do what you want. We have the best legal team. Yeah? I, I can't do that. OI4K, Inc. Um, I dare them to try to ban it. Dare them. He has a three-year contract stating okay. that he will make his money no matter what. Even if they ban him here, Guaranteed. big deal. He's still going to get paid. Right. And we're just going to go to other places and kill them, too. That's the last thing Rockstar wants to see. Right, absolutely. I mean, uh, you know, I don't say this because, you know, I, I want you guys gone. I say it because, you know, I think you're great competitors. I, I, you know, I may not agree with everything you do, but I really enjoy watching your matches, right? So I want you here. And my concern is if you're destroying people, if you're eliminating the competition, you know, uh, who's going to be left for you to wrestle, right? I mean... We want to see great matches with the, the, the best wrestlers there are today. And we get that. But if you start killing people off, I mean, come on, right? There's got to be a line drawn somewhere. There's no line. There's no line. What are you in this business for? To get your hand raised? Fuck that. I'm out here to hurt people every single time I'm in that ring because I want to be the only one left. I want everyone to look at me and say, God damn, that's a good motherfucker. I want the spotlight on anybody else. Right. I come here to be the best. I come here to work my ass off and be the best. Being a nice guy, being a little happy, smiling all the time, doing whatever, chanting to the crowd, that's not shit. Okay. Where did it get you, kid? Where did it get you? Nowhere. Got me wrestling a bunch of fucking... I don't even want to talk about it. It just pisses me off. I'll tell you exactly what it got him. It got him nowhere. Yeah. It got him no competition. It got him to the point where he was going nowhere. He was spinning his wheels. Him and I, we're the same guys. Right. Since I've been here, everyone keeps asking, where's my title shot? I don't get title shots here. I don't get opportunities here. Do you know why I don't get opportunities? 
I'll tell you why. If you're the best guy on the card, they're going to hold you down for as long as you can. For as long as they can. They're going to hold you down and see how much you can take. They're going to see how much shit you can take. And I'll be honest with you. I'm not taking any shit anymore. I was everybody's doormat. I was everyone. I was everyone's whipping boy for too long. How many times have you seen Dave Chris put on the goddamn best match of the night? Many a time. How about this? We've said it before. Aaron Williams, gone. Jake Christ, gone. Ron Mathis, gone. Who took this fucking company on his shoulders? I'll tell you the two people that did. The kid, the kid did everything he could to progress, and he did. Right. Week in, week out, me, the kid, and Dustin Ray's. Nobody else was stepping up. And I know you guys were all there. You heard the morale meetings. Yeah. Everyone saying, yeah, it's trying to grab the brass rings. No. I am the brass ring. Go ahead, grab it. It's called my dick. I am the upper echelon. The kid is the upper echelon. JT Davidson is the upper echelon of professional wrestling. He is the end all, be all. But is that what it takes today? Like, it, it, yeah, it's that's a, exactly what it takes. You're asking me, it, it, is this what it takes? Killing people, hurting people, maiming people? Yes, that's exactly what it takes. I'm getting sick and tired of everyone else getting opportunities when they don't fucking deserve it. Why are guys still in the fucking ring when nobody wants to see them? When they have to be drugged by the fucking hand by their tag partner because they fucking suck. I'll tell you why. Politics. And I don't play politics. My brother, my brother's the best wrestler in this area. Bar none. But why is it that every time that when people start mentioning the best wrestlers in the area, I'm always on the, the fourth or fifth on the fucking list. Fuck that. Nobody can do what I do. Nobody. Nobody can touch the fucking kid either. The kid, Just like I said, the kid is going to be the next Jake Christ. The kid is going to be better than any Christ will ever be. The kid has so much fucking potential. I wish I had a mentor like, like myself when I was coming in, yeah. teaching Teaching him the way I, t- or teaching me the way I taught him. Right. If I would have had that, yeah. I would have fucking been killing a long time ago. I wouldn't have had a torn ACL. See, that's the thing, guys. Everyone wants to look at the, oh, it's not the new OI4K. No. Bitch, I am OI4K. He is OI4K. Rob Smith, suck my dick. The kid could wrestle circles around David Starr, Rob Smith, or any other jagaloon around here. Everybody wants to talk about who the best tag team is? Well, guess what? There's the fucking hat. Phone it in. Me and the kid, we're going to fucking dominate. We're going to destroy. We're going to murder. We will maim and we will kill motherfuckers. Because that's what we do. And you guys look awfully fucking scared right now. You guys look real fucking terrified. The kid's in your fucking face right now. And you're terrified. Do you see? Do you see the passion that the kid has? Do you see the fucking passion in his eyes? Can you see it? it. Because right now, it's a fucking revolution. Right now, Rockstar is under siege. And they don't even know it. We're creeping and crawling under the fucking streets. And we're going to get you when you're sleeping. Because that's exactly what we are. We're the sleepers. Motherfuckers don't want to look at us. Motherfuckers don't want to recognize what we can do. There's a reason why we are the world's most dangerous fucking group. Because when you don't see it coming, there it is. A fucking shank to your spleen. Uh, Very strong words there. Uh, from yeah. OY4K Incorporated, from um, from Dave Chris and from Zachary Wentz. Now, Zach, I have to ask you, after what we just heard there, I mean, Dave, your father said that 
you know, he says you're going to be the best Chris. He says you're going to be bigger than Jake, bigger than Dave. Are you ready for that kind of hype right there? I mean, we've seen a lot wait, of... Wait, 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 wait. Oh, oh, okay. Am I ready? You're asking me if I'm ready. Do I look like I'm fucking ready? Uh, yes, you do. You're goddamn right I'm ready. I wouldn't be here if I wasn't ready. I'm ready to fucking do whatever the fuck I have to do to stand at the top of that mountain and piss on everyone else. He is the upper echelon. Right. Goddamn right. And now, this Friday, at Saved by the Bell, you go one-on-one with David Starr. Let us hear. What do you think about that? Why are we still talking about David Starr? This interview is about the kid. Okay. Well, he's his next opponent, right? Fuck no opponent. No, no. He's the next victim. He's the next victim. He's the next victim. He's the next victim. Well, I'm not here for, let's say, all of you. I'm here merely to talk to and put a message out to one certain gentleman who I care about as an investment, as a product that puts money in my, pro- in my pocket. That gentleman's name is Mathis. Mathis, this is Michael speaking to you, not just as a friend, but a person who's trying to help you better yourself in a financial manner. Lately, things have not arise as they should. I thought like the stock of Mathis would be rising and rising and rising. But here of late, it's been stagnant. Much like the Dow Jones, it's been plummeting to a point of very, very, very bad things. And so, Mathis, with this message, I put it to you simply as this. You need to rise to the occasion and be a champion, a fighting athlete, a man that I have seen not only beat my ass and threaten to break my neck, but has simply beat some of the best that has came through the doors of Rockstar Pro Wrestling. So Mathis, I plead, please, Come back to be the great athlete you are and stop this madness of you this not winning. You need to get your head out of your own ass and come back to the winning ways. Or simply, I will sell my investment and move on to the next product. And this has been a simple, great moment with a man known as Mike. Right. Well, there we have it. Uh, uh, strong language from OI4K Incorporated and bizarre language from the man simply known as Michael. Um, how are you feeling after that interview? I mean, I'm, I'm a little... Yeah, I'm, I'm still yeah. a little on edge, uh, a <laughs> little nervous. A few of those questions, I thought they were going to go after me on that. But well, they're violent men, Mark. <laughs> they are killers, um, yeah. You know, uh, this is not the smiley, happy, no. pander to the crowd, Zachary Wentz that we used to know and love. Right, and that's kind of, I guess I should have known better. I'm a little naive. Yeah. I've been told that a time or two. But uh, when we were talking about interviewing Zachary Wentz, I was ready to ask him some fun questions yeah. there. But, you know, he, he brought Dave, his father, with right. him, and the mood was anything but fun. During right. That. So uh, let's get beyond that unpleasantness and, and request your presence. At Saved by the Bell, the final encounter, September 4th. That's Friday. Doors open at 7. First bell's at 7.30. 15 bucks for front row, 10 bucks for general admission. You need to be here. Yeah, you can't beat all that talent for 10 bucks. I mean, it's a steal. If you forget what the matches are, go back and listen to the earlier part of this podcast again. Yeah, listen to it a few times if you want. We need some hits on here. Right. So be here for Saved by the Bell. Be here for Amped every week. Uh, be here for Ludus, which is in two weeks, I believe. September the 18th. 
Super Oprah's gonna be there. Oh, I can't wait for that. Against Jock? You yep, kidding me? Against Jock Sampson. Super oh. Oprah was one of the very first wrestlers I ever saw at an indie show. Is that true? Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about it. What were, what were your thoughts? Um, it uh, blew my mind. I was not prepared for what Super Oprah delivered. Right. I, I've seen way. Super Oprah, too. Uh, very entertaining. Yeah. I'll say that. But if that was your first indie match, that, that would kind of... It was something else. <laughs> right, right. It's a whole new world out there. I think it was in Logan, maybe, outside of Athens. Anyway, uh, we want to thank our sponsors, as always. Uh, Truth and Triumph Tattoo, uh, the OMG Touch... And there's more. Alley Cat Designs. What's the horror, death, gore production? Oh, you're, you're putting me on the spot here. I actually don't remember. I, uh, it's something like that. Um, sure, I'll take If you're into it. bloody violent music, like Zach Wentz clearly is, yes. um, check them out. Uh, we have a ton of concerts for you to check out here. Uh, let's go through a few. First Saturday, September 5th. Holy shit, it's Toxic Holocaust. 7 p.m., that's an all-ages show. And the night following, Sunday, September 6th, it's going to be Raven. Raven? Not well. What about Raven? Not the wrestler. Oh shit! Thrash Legends Raven at seven p.m. for thirteen dollars. We just planned out your whole weekend for you. <laughs> yeah, you did. And it's all here at Rockstar Pro Arena. And then Friday, September twenty fifth, we have the Barbed Wire Dolls coming in at seven p.m. That's an all ages show. It is. And after that, October first. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Yeah. I'm reading this wrong. No, no, no. I'm sorry. You're, oh, you're reading it right. Oh, wait, it says Wednesday. What, what is this? That is a guy's name. Oh, I'm an idiot. I read that and I was like, wait, Thursday or Wednesday? Yeah. Okay. On Thursday, October 1st, we have Wednesday 13 here along with The Loveless. $10 pre, $13 right. at the door. That's right. That's an all ages show as well. Uh, then we're going to have Jesse Lawson on Tuesday, October 27th. It's the day before my birthday. Is it? Yeah. Well, it'll be a birthday show. I like it. It's with curses. That's 7 p.m. all ages. And then Monday, November 9th, P. Lander Z. Seems like some really cool superhero crazy shit. Uh, with, <laughs> Sounds like it. With Deuterus and Dipspit. That's 7 Whoa. p.m. That's all ages. And many of these all ages shows also serve alcohol. Uh, just know that you have to have your ID present yeah. so you can get a wristband. Or you can go all CM Punk and just put the X on your hand. You or know? You, can, you can roll like that, too. That's yeah, cool. No, no problem with that. So uh, be sure to check out rockstarprowrestling.com. Uh, I have here written, etc. <laughs> <laughs> well, rockstarprowrestling.com is where you go to find everything. You can right. go on the YouTube, you can go on the Twitters, you can go on the Instagrams. I don't even know if we have one. Facebook, Facebook, Spreaker, <laughs> Periscope. Yeah. You, you can find all that stuff by going to rockstarprowrestling.com. Let, let's leave it at that. It's okay. that simple. Yeah, and uh, I want to thank Motel Beds. I used their song at the beginning. Oh, yeah. I, I didn't tell them, so hopefully that's cool. Uh, that's off the Aqua Bear Volume 5 compilation, so check that out if you want good music. Uh, again, congrats to uh, the guys at that other podcast uh, for uh, 105 episodes, I think, at this point. Over two years. They do it weekly, man. We've been going oh. about the same time, but we do it monthly. Yeah, so. how many are we at? Um, 32, I think. This 32. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, you know. Mind. but How, how did that I, intro go? Uh, I'm not going to do it again. Oh, okay, okay. They can go back. But, you know, I do want to say real quick, okay. thank you for listening to the Backstage Pass, the only podcast deadlier than Jimmy Snooker. Boom! That's all for this episode. Be sure to come back for another edition of Backstage Pass, Rockstar Pro Wrestling's official podcast.